Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. If you're looking for news, tips, and stories about fishing the Great Lakes, you've come to the right place. And now your host, Chris Larson. Hello and welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. Today, our guest is Captain Andy Bliss from Chase and Tail Adventures in Oswego, New York. Andy, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for having me. And first of all, just tell me a little bit of how you got started in guiding. What's your kind of background in fishing? To be honest, my grandfather's the one that got me started. He got a rod in my hand before the age of two. I, uh, I grew up right on the shore of the Hudson River, fished down there, caught stripers and bluefish. And um, In the mid-80s, he brought me up here to Lake Ontario, had a little camp, and I'd come up for a weekend here, a week, you know, during the summer, started fishing out in the lake. Freshman year of uh, high school, my grandparents actually uh, moved up here for the summer, and uh, I started working on chair boats out of uh, Sodus. A lot of great captains there, so I started on a back of a, working the back of a charter boat when I was 14. When I went to college, Oswego State was the only school that really had my interest, seeing as it was right on the shores of Lake Ontario. I met uh, Captain Tom Burke the summer or the spring of my freshman year of college in 1999. Started working with him. I've been working with him ever since. Been 22 seasons working together. He's a great captain. He's taught me a ton. Been lucky enough to work with a lot of different great captains along the lake, learn a lot of different tips and tricks. And, you know, everyone does stuff just a little bit different. You just pick up a little bit here and there and really help me uh, fine tune my game and make me a better angler. I started my river guiding business when I was in college. And uh, same thing, Tom helped me out. A lot of guys along the way, the late Kevin Davis helped me out big time. And I do that from late September through May, and then I fish with Tommy on the pole steel from May through uh, September. So you've been, you've been fishing literally since you, could, so you could, since you could hold a rod and really been part of the guiding business, you know, since you were a teenager. That, that's, that's awesome. You're not a guy that came into it late. You've been, you've been living and breathing this thing your whole life. It's, it's mid-December. You kind of touched on a little bit. What are you up to right now? What, what's your day like these days in uh, mid-December? So right now, you know, we're fishing the river. Um, a lot of steelhead around, a lot of browns this year. You know, with unfor- you know, the, the only good thing with the COVID shutdown for as a river guide is uh, all those uh, cookie cutter browns we uh, use as charter fish in April and May didn't get taken home and put in the freezers or in the frying pans, and they're in the river right now. So we're doing really well on the browns. You know, we're getting a lot of three to five pound brownies, and uh, you know, a lot of nice steelhead and rainbows and you know, I start my day at, at dawn, and I fish, you know, till about 2, 2.30, and get home, tie a bait, relax on the couch for a little bit, but, you know, thank God this year, you know, between the, we have had some great fishing, and uh, really good weather, you know, it's, what, December 10th today, it was a high of mid-40s, low of 38 this morning, you can't complain for December, not have to worry about icing the guides, and, you know, really freezing out there, it's been really nice, good weather for us this year. Yeah, some great weather out there. Not for the guys who want to go ice fishing, but uh, for what you're doing, it couldn't be better. Tell me a little bit about that river fishing on the Oswego River. How do the seasonalities work? What's it like out there fishing? So I usually start, like I said, around the 20th of September. We transition from the lake to the river. Um, some years we have that Indian summer, the, the heat holds on. We'll fish lower in the system, like down in the Oswego Harbor. We'll troll a little bit. You know, especially those years we have that uh, lake flip where we get the cold water, draws those kings in the harbor. They don't go far. We control for them down there, um, which is fun. We did that a little bit this year. And then once we transition into the actual river, uh, we start, like I said, about 20 September, and we'll fish kings. I usually fish them up till about the last week of October. And we'll fish skein under a float where we take the skein out of the kings, uh, cure it up with Putsky's Fire, cure pink, red combination. Um, gives it a bright color, gives it real good scent. The sulfates really attract those king salmon to, to chomp on it. Um, that and we cast crankbaits. It's another fun way to catch a fish. I mean, when you're reeling in a crankbait, you're reeling in really slow. You have a 20 pound salmon hit that plug, he wants to rip it right out of your hands. It's a great way to catch them. And then the other technique is we back troll deep diving plugs. This year with low water, didn't get a chance to do that much, but we did a lot of casting, a lot of float fishing. Um, it was, you know, a lot of fish this year, but low water made it tough, clear, warm. And then as you get into late October, we transition into trout fishing. I primarily float fish where we're running 11 foot rods, 10 pound test, fixed float, um, shot pattern. We run a lot of Great Lakes Steel at company beads, trickling beads. You know, they're made right here in Oswego County as the colors that match our fish's eggs. So they're very effective. 
And then with the new fire gel that came out from Husky this year, that on our beads has been a, you know, can't miss presentation. Um, the fish just love them. And then as the water gets colder, we switch over fish some eggs. We run either uh, fresh uh, trout eggs or Putski's new trout uh, trout eggs. They sell work great. We tie that up in some uh, mesh, fish under the float, you know, as well. And uh, the nice thing about Oswego is we have browns, steelhead, and rainbow trout. And we'll do that from, you know, like I said, last week of October right through about the second week of April. By then, water's warming up. And uh, the seal had to done spawn and they start dropping back to the lake and it's time to go back to lake fishing. Yeah, let's talk about that lake fishing. You're spending your summers out on Lake Ontario with cold steel sport fishing. Tell me kind of about that partnership and how that works. Tom and I, like I said, we started fishing together May 23rd, 1999. Tommy, when I started with him, had a 33 foot egg harbor. We fished that vessel till July 2004 when Tom purchased a, a larger egg harbor, 36 footer. Um, that's the one you've seen up and down the lake. We've fished everywhere from the Niagara Bar to Henderson Harbor over the years. We've covered about every mile of this, this lake shoreline over the last uh, 16 years with that boat. She's treated us well. Um, we, you know, out of Oswego, we start the year off. Like I said, the boat goes in about mid-April. We'll start in right tight, anywhere from 5 to 15 feet of water. Fishing browns, um, plane aboard fishing, stick baits, a lot of. Michigan stinger, standard stingrays off the boards with uh, one, two colors, or even just flat lines with a little bit of weight, trolling and shallow for those browns, um, you know, catching those two to four pound cookie cutters. And then, you know, we're seeing fish up to 20 pounds. I mean, our biggest browns over the years, some of our biggest ones will come in the month of May. Second, third week of May can be some really big trout. And they're in five to 10 feet of water. And we're catching those on 10 to eight to 10 pound test, light action rods. So it's a really fun time, you know, a lot of action. Um, you know, we've had eight on at once doing that. It's it's a blast. You know, and then as the water warms up, transition, the fish slide out a little bit, go a little bit deeper, start running more core, same thing, catching our browns. We'll try, target lake trout a little bit late May into June. And then usually around uh, late, late June, on a normal year, kings will start showing up, you know, and then we'll target the kings from uh, late June right through uh, September. You know, we got our offshore fishery and Mid July, right through second, third week of August, where we can get out deep water. Nice thing about Oswego, for every mile you go out, it drops off about 100 feet when you head on a northwest heading. So we're all five miles, we're in about 500 feet. We can find 700 foot of water out there. And uh, in that July, early August time frame, those fish that are offshore like that, they're hungry, they're out there looking for food. So when you find them, usually you have pretty good action. It sounds like you've had a chance to fish throughout Lake Ontario. What do you like most about Oswego? What what makes that area special to you? One of the nice parts about Oswego is we have a lot of structure. You know, we head to the east. We have a spot, a four-mile point, which it goes from, say, 40 to 100 feet really quickly. So the Browns really like to congregate around that structure, whether it be 60-foot to the 90-foot contour. You can get up and down on that shelf. And the brown trout seem to be more like they're not bottom dwellers, but they like structure close to bottom. So they want to find where temperatures that they want to be in like that 55 to 63 degrees is intersects with bottom within about 10 feet of bottom so we have good structure to the east to do that then to the west we have four shoals similar kind of drop off great fishing tracks a lot of fish in the spring and then the other thing we have is like i said easy access quick access to deep water i mean on a typical day we don't have to run more than three to four miles to get to our fishing grounds you know, we leave the dock and we're fishing within 20, 30 minutes, you know, not even 20, 15, 20 minutes. You know, we don't spend a lot of time, you know, having to cruise around the lake, even to get off, like I said, to get offshore, it's a quick run out because it's not that far. And then the other big advantage is come fall, those kings start sniffing their home waters. You know, majority of those kings are heading to the Sam River. And with the Oswego River being there, being a bigger, bigger drainage, bigger flowing river, it draws those kings in first. So when we get them, they show up in Oswego, they kind of will stage out there a little bit while they're still in the feeding mode before they decide to slide east towards their home river, the Sam River. So when we're fishing them, they're a little more active, a little more aggressive, they're feeding a little better than when you get those just straight, you know, cranky stager, staging fish. What does your typical king salmon program look like? How are you kind of setting things up? <clears throat> so... The last few years, we've had some great fishing in April, even into May, or even in April, even continuing into May, June. So, you know, early we're fishing a lot of lead core, slide divers, um, you know, downriggers. But once you get into, like, say, our typical East End consistent fishery that third week of June, by then, 
those fish are starting to drop. They're 60 plus. Um, you know, I set up first and foremost my Canon Optimums, credible riggers, pair that with your fish hawk. All the information I need in the back of the boat. I don't have to, you know, yell to the front to ask Tom what I got for temp. It's right there on my unit now and on my Hummerbird screen in the back of the boat. It's incredible. So I'm putting my, you know, setting my riggers down, finding the temp. I like, uh, you know, top end, mid to upper 50s, and then I'll drop down from there. Um, so, you know, I'm running my three riggers right across the back, setting them from 50, say 57, 53 on the top, down to about 42 degrees. And then I'll put out a, a pair or sometimes four divers, depending on how deep they are, to cover, you know, a varying uh, stages in the column and then different temps. And then I got my big boards out run my outer boats with you know anywhere from three to five coppers just spread out a lot of rods you know especially when we're offshore don't have to worry about bottom anything out i'll load the spread up get as many rods in just trying to put fish in the boat for the guys put smiles on their faces yeah what is that day like what's a day like out in the boat with you and, and tom um you know i try to you know what i people always talk about catching fish i mean obviously they come up here to go fishing you know, fishing's great. Fish, I always tell people, fishing's always good. It's catching goes up and down, which we all know as you're fishermen, there's good days, there's bad days. You know, we're gonna, I'm going to work hard and put fish in the boat for you. That's never going to be a question. But the thing I really try to do is have, have everyone have a good time. You know, make them laugh, tell stories. I mean, the one part about this business, I mean, like I said, I've been doing it a long time. The relationships you make with your customers, the people you see, you know, a lot of these customers have been fishing with us for 10, 15 years. You see them once a year. And you got a whole year worth of stories that they can tell you, you know, funny stories you can relate to them. I mean, that's that's my favorite part of this job, to be honest with you. You know, everyone says you get to go fishing every day. I don't get to fish much at all. I take people fishing every day. What I do is I try to help people have a good time and enjoy life. Life's too short to worry about the problems outside of, you know, everyday problems. You get on that boat, I want to have fun. You know, I want to laugh, enjoy our time. Tell me about your favorite di favorite day out in the water with, with clients. Well, I've had, uh, I've been fortunate to have a lot of good days. And to be honest with you, yesterday was a uh, really good day. I have a client, he, uh, he's been fishing me for almost 10 years now. He tried for a couple of years to get a date. He finally got a date. He was at a Christmas concert. He always tells me the story how he's at a Christmas concert with his wife. And I called him and he couldn't answer the phone. So at half time slash intermission to most normal people, he called me back. He got a date for the following year. He was so excited. He's been fishing me ever since. Well, he got a new job, got the call that he's been waiting for for two years while he was on my boat three weeks ago. And he had his two week in between, um, you know, before he starts his new job. So he says, if any day cancels, you call me. Well, he came up yesterday by himself and we fished yesterday and it was great fishing. And when I'm, when I'm guiding, I rarely fish with my clients. It's there to put them on fish. I want them to catch fish, have a good time. And he wanted me to fish with him. So we spent the day yesterday laughing, joking, and pounding on fish. It was one of those days that, you know, that's what makes it all worth it. The smiles that he had at the end of the day was just incredible. That sounds like a great day. It seems that uh, just about every serious Great Lakes fisherman has kind of a special sauce. What is something that you do that maybe a lot of other anglers don't do? I don't, I don't think I do anything special. I think I just, I try to, I try to always look at what's going on related to experience from the past. You know, like you said, doing it as long as you have, you've seen a lot, been around the block, you know, certain conditions, stuff will just pop in like, oh, we had a, we had a rollover, temps down 25 feet, we're fishing right in front of the harbor. That happened three years ago. What do we get them on? Oh, this rig and, and run it. And there's so many times it just, you're able to repeat something you've done in the past. So experience really helps helps me, I think, pull fish some days when other guys aren't. Instead of getting panicked on those days when conditions are off or changing, because you've been there, you've done it, you just stay calm and just go back to your memory banks and try to find, you know, remember little things that you did in the past that help you put fish in on those tough days in the past. And, I mean, I think that's, the, you know, one of my attributes that I always am proud of. I just try to stop think it over let's relax and really put it together and let's see what we can come up with Andy, is there something you wanted to talk about today that i didn't ask you about me i i could talk to you all night i'm a talker anyone knows me to tell you i'll talk <laughs> um 
I mean, I guess, you know, you asked about a typical set for the lake. I mean, I'm a big meat fisherman. You know, we get into July, when I'm setting those riggers, I have meat rigs and meat rigs and meat rigs. I'm a big meat rig guy, Atomic Twinkies, you know, Fire Brian Bates, um, Michigan Stinger, Gibbs Delta Flashers. I mean, those are my mainstays. I have them. If I'm running an eight rod spread, I probably have meat on seven of them. You know, otherwise it's all Michigan Stinger spoons, Stingrays and Magnum for Kings and the Stingers and Stingrays for Browns. I mean, I'm, that's, you you know, I guess going back to one of the other questions, that's probably more you wanted to hear other than just putting stuff in the water. But No, that's, just, that's what know. I'm looking for. I love that stuff. How are you running your meat? Now, for, look, how do I run it? Yeah. Reese Davis heads. I'm a huge Reese Davis head guy. Always have been. You know, some of the other heads I know I've used. I've caught, I don't know. I've just always gone back to my Reese Davis. I, you know, when I started with Tom in '99, that's what we ran. It was straight meat program. We ran three rods of meat. We didn't need to run divers too much, or we didn't have coppers. So it was big paddles. You know, hot spots and uh, fish slashers with just straight meat or with Twinkie rigs with Reese Davis heads. It's all we had. And the old Reese Davis cup bait slid right in there. Worked great. You know, and then you know tommy flies you know came on the scene in the early 2000s meat disappeared and we came fly fishing we were in a lot of flies for a lot of years and then uh, when the meat fishery you know meat kind of made its way back in and you know went back to our roots and just fish a lot of meat that fire fire brine really seems to help that meat hold together and they i don't know what it is about it but the kings really seem to love it you know and then as we get into later in the year when those stagers show up it's it's a lot. We go back, kind of fall back into my fly program. I love those flies for those stagers. It just seems to really turn them on. Same thing. Just, you know, go from seven out of eight rods of meat to seven out of eight rods go all atomic flies and stinger flashers, you know, come later in the year. So, and then maybe one big meat rod down the bottom, scraping those big boys off. You've been doing this now for over 20 years. How has the lake changed since you started? So, I mean, I remember as a kid, it was bright bright you know chartreuse for palace or orange and gold or palace for browns and then as you got into the you know in the 80s and early 90s and as like when i first started with tom in 99 black and silver smithwicks clear water just that water went from that soupy you know kind of pea green color to a clear clear water you know we went from bright fluorescent spoons um to naturals i mean there was i remember years in that early late 90s early 2000s We'd run black and silver stingers on everything. The LY pattern, just as natural as you could get. And now over the last seven to eight years, it almost seems like the zoo muscles, I don't know if they peaked, but we have that green water again in the summertime. And, you know, some of those brighter colors are starting to come back. You know, the Mountain Dews are really good. You know, everyone's kind of put that together. It's, a, you know, it's brighty, gaudier fashion. Um, that bright summer conditions with that green water, a chartreuse fire brine meat has been a, you know, a stud for me at times. So you kind of seen the lake clean up and not that it's dirt or color wise, you know, that color of that water being green, just went from green to clear and it's seems like it's getting a little more color to it. So, you know, you got to adapt to the conditions that were given. Awesome. Andy, it was great to visit with you today. Uh, people want to book a trip with you or just find out more about you. Where can they find you? You can find me on the internet at www.chasingtailadventures.com and Facebook at Chase and Tail Adventures and Instagram at Chase and Tail ADV. Um, they can email me at Chase and Tail ADV at yahoo.com, you know, or check out Cold Steel Sport Fishing on Facebook or uh, www.coldsteelsportfishing.com on the, on the internet. Captain Andy Bliss, thanks so much for your time and coming on the show. Really appreciate your insights. Fun to talk to you about uh, your area. I love talking to these people from different spots along the Great Lakes and kind of learning about what things are like there, and I think the audience does too, so appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for listening to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. For more information on fishing the Great Lakes, visit our blog at fishhawkelectronics.com.